We welcome you to this time of worship with Carlisle, Radville, and McClure United Churches. As we gather, we acknowledge that our buildings are on the traditional lands of the First Nations and the homeland of the Métis. We are all treaty people, bound by the understandings made in the treaty agreements. Carlisle United Church is on Treaty 2, Radville United Church is on Treaty 4, and McClure United Church is on Treaty 6. As treaty people, we pay our respect to the history, spirituality, and culture of the Indigenous peoples of this land. McClure United Church also acknowledges that we are an affirming ministry of the United Church of Canada. We strive to welcome people of all gender identities and sexual orientations. We give thanks to God for this opportunity to gather together for reflection, song, and prayer. It is our hope that everyone will feel the warmth of welcome and God's love today. Hosanna! Happy Palm Sunday! It's good to see everyone this morning, good to be together on this joy-filled and uh, important day. Thank you for coming and opening your heart to God. I want to welcome visitors who might be with us this morning. Uh, I hope you feel McClure's warm welcome. I hope you maybe helped yourself to a cup of coffee and brought that in to make this space feel a little bit more like home. If you didn't, there's coffee after church, and you're more than welcome to join us. It would be lovely to get to know you better. I want to welcome our friends from Radville and Carlisle. Welcome to you this morning. Good to be together. All those who are joining us on live stream and those who will join us later in the week on YouTube, this is us, this eclectic, amazing church family together. We are uh, still struggling a little bit with our sound system. Can you hear me okay? Awesome, that's great. Now, if you need hearing assists, you might be having a different experience this morning. So if you see someone next to you who's looking for those, those um, things that hook on your ears, those are not working. Um, but there are large print bulletins at the back, and I will make copies of this sermon afterwards, you know, if anybody really wants it. So. <laughs> might be nice for folks just to have some quiet time, you know what I mean? Anywho, um, lots of announcements. Uh, one is that there is one more Lenten lunch coming up this Thursday. And so if you'd like to join us for lunch and an opportunity to pray together as a community, um, please call the church office by Tuesday at noon. We will be uh, celebrating or um, acknowledging Monday Thursday on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. So when we hear the story of Jesus um, washing the feet of the disciples. It's an opportunity for us to, to uh, deeply connect with our, um, the way that we serve. And so I invite you to come to that service Thursday at 7. Easter Sunday morning at 6.15, if you are the hardy type, we will be meeting up on the hill um, behind uh, Bishop uh, Pocock uh, School at uh, 615 and uh, worshiping together as the sun rises. So you're welcome to join uh, uh, that, that group of crazy people, <laughs> well, this group of faithful people. Uh, it's a very meaningful time and so I really encourage you, to, if you can, to get up the hill to come. I'm hoping some of the snow will be gone by then. We shall see. And then of course at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning we will be here in this building celebrating Easter together. Other announcements um, are that the book sale is coming up on April the 22nd, and so you need to start culling your books and getting ready for that. And if you could help with the sale, there will be a sign-up sheet at the back after worship today. Also, a very important announcement is that we've been invited for supper. This is one of those invitations where we're not exactly sure what it all means, but we've been invited, so, you know, we should go. So um, we have been renting space to our Muslim friends, and uh, they are so grateful for the hospitality that they received here, and I'm so glad that they have felt at home, and they want to feed us, which is what you do, right, when you're grateful for things. So they've invited us all for supper <laughs> on April the 12th, at, uh, and uh, the door will be open at 7. I have no clue 
when we will actually eat because they need to break their fast at sundown and I think that's at quarter to eight that night. So we may be visiting and that kind of thing but we may not eat until eight so you might want to snack before you get here. I have no idea the degree of heat that we will experience in the food and so you know roll a Tums uh, Abeda had a, a, a birthday party here and um, I helped her set up and my son came and helped her set up and afterwards uh, she put a, a dish of food aside. She says, this is for your son. And I said, oh, that's great. Like, where's my plate? <laughs> but I didn't say that out loud. She just, she just kind of read it in my face. She says, I looked at your face. There isn't a plate for you. And I went, yep, very white woman. I totally get that. You're absolutely right. I'm not good with spice. <laughs> we had a good laugh about that. <laughs> oh, dear. So if you can come for supper, there's a sign-up sheet. Um, we thought we maybe should tell them how many people are coming uh, so they know how to cook. Uh, yeah, yeah, they said about 120 people could come. Of course, that won't fit in this space. But anyway, we will just roll with it. Excellent. Um, ooh, we are celebrating another meal, and that's today at our communion table. Uh, God invites us to the table to be, to be fed and nurtured, and of course, everyone is welcomed to this table. It doesn't matter your denomination or if you're feeling you're a good person or not good person today. This is God's table. It's not the table of the United Church of Canada either. All that is required is a hunger and thirst for God. And so if that fits for you today, please know you are welcome to the table. And we will do communion as we have in the past, and that means that you all will come to the front. And so that means you will leave this way, come up to the front, there will be three stations, and you'll go back to your seats the other way. Does that make perfect sense? Excellent. <laughs> when we're done today, the chairs can remain in place. Oh, and we have this beautiful bouquet of flowers with us this morning. Al and Gladys Christensen have brought that for us to enjoy and to enhance our worship time. It is in memory of their daughter, Shannon, and it is her birthday. So friends, those are all the announcements I have today, and I invite us now to take a breath, to become fully present in this space. As we enter Holy Week, we are drawn to the flickering flame of our Christ candle. It burns brightly in our churches and in our hearts. Yet we know that amidst the celebration of this day, there are those who want to extinguish the light in us and in Jesus. May the radiance of Christ's abiding love shine brightly this day and through the coming Holy Week. Call to worship has some responses in it. Those are the yellow words. Hosanna, the people cry. We shout, Alleluia. The parade has begun. The bands have struck up the opening chords. The roar of the crowds can be heard. Are you ready? Let us pray. And I'll offer these words on our behalf. We believe in you, God, who walks head first into the world's suffering, who lights a candle in the darkest night, who pulls back the curtain so we can see the stars. We believe in you, God, who does not shy away from the truth, who is bold in seeking justice and humble in taking power. We believe in you, God, 
who sees our hurt and wraps love around it, cocooning us in hope, tethering us to one another. We believe in you, God, who is always carrying us from the pain of the world into the hope of a new day. Help us follow where you lead. Hosanna. Amen. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Hallelujah forevermore. Jesus came bringing us love. Jesus came bringing us love. Jesus came bringing us love. We have to keep hidden from God, not our doubt, our laziness, or the ways in which we have fallen short. In confession, we speak honestly and are met with grace. So let us not hold back. Let us bring our full selves to this prayer of confession that I offer now on our behalf our prayer of confession. God of grace, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. God, forgive us for the times when we do not trust your word and do not follow where you lead. We long to be the ones who can go into the village ahead of you. Forgive us when we play it safe. Amen. Our words of assurance. There will be days when we dare not follow. There will be days when we ignore God's call, when we choose comfort over courage and ourselves over others. But even on those days, even on our worst days, we belong to God. Nothing can separate us from God's love. We are loved, we are forgiven, and sent out to serve. Hosanna. Amen. And on this path, the gates of holiness are opened wide. And on this path, the gates of holiness are opened wide. And on this path, the gates of holiness are open wide. Open wide, open wide, open wide. The gates are open. The gates of holiness are open wide, so enter, in. so enter in. The gates of holiness are open wide, so enter in. The gates of holiness are open wide, open wide, open wide, open wide. The gates 
are open wide. The kids are welcome to go to Rainbow Village. Eden's at the back. of illumination. Holy God, sometimes it is hard to hear you over the hosannas. Sometimes it is hard to hear you over the noise of the city streets. Sometimes it is hard to hear you over our racing thoughts, our mental to-do lists, or our desire to fit in. Sometimes it is hard to hear you in this noisy world. So just as you stopped traffic in Jerusalem, stop traffic here. Pause the rush. Open the gates. Dwell among us until your word is all we can hear. We are listening. We are laying down our cloaks. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humbled and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus. 
Jesus, ride on, no one can hinder thee. The children sing and dance and shout, no one can hinder thee. No one can hinder thee. King Jesus done just what he said. No one can hinder thee. He healed the sick and raised the dead. No one can hinder thee. Ride on, King Jesus. No one can hinder thee. Ride on, King Jesus, ride on, no one can I hinder thee. The light of God shines on his face, no one can I hinder thee. He offers all his pardoning grace, no one can I hinder thee. Come join the throng, your voice is raised. No one can I hinder thee. The King of life deserves your praise. No one can I hinder thee. Ride on, King Jesus. No one can I hinder thee. Ride on, King Jesus, ride on. No one can hinder thee. No one can hinder thee. No one can hinder thee. This is a no-brainer. We do exactly what Jesus said. We go into town, we find the donkey with its coat. I just don't understand why Jesus wants us to commit a crime. He wants us to steal a donkey. No, no. Not steal, borrow. Oh, so we're just supposed to stroll into town, untie the donkey, and... And say exactly what he said to say. Oh, what is it? Oh, that the Lord has need of it? Yes, and we'll return it. What does that even mean, the Lord has need of it? It's self-explanatory. Why are you being so, so... So, so, so me? Because you all know that I'm a rule follower of the bunch. I just don't know why Jesus just didn't ask Peter to do this. Yeah. I'm thinking the same thing. This is so up Peter's alley. Steal the donkey, cause an uproar, that's his thing. Peter is the reason why banks chain their pens. Oh, I just don't want to go to jail. You know I hate one-ply toilet paper. I... Lower your voice. What? Look, we're just going to do what Jesus says. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? I don't know, a cracked rib, a busted lip, the kind of name calling that'll put you in therapy years down the road? Stop it! Stop whining! Stop talking! Stop everything! Stop freaking out! Um, I, I, I don't mean to be judgy here, but someone needs to get the log out of their own eye. You have trust issues. Serious trust issues. You even know how many germs are in a jail cell, do you? No, 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 I don't, I don't. I'm sure it's a whole lot, okay? I don't know. And I don't know why Jesus wants us to get a donkey, and I don't know why people are gathering branches over here and lining the streets, but it just seems like there's something big is about to happen. Wait a minute. Yeah. Go back. Why did you say I had trust issues? Okay. Okay, let's make it about you. What? Think about it. Since we've been following him, we've seen him give sight to the blind. He's healed people with leprosy. He's raised people from the dead. From the dead? I can't even raise you from a nap. Hey, I think we can trust him with this donkey issue. That just did. I have trust issues. I see how Jesus trusts the Father. <sighs> he trusts so much, even more than the ground that I'm standing on. To trust someone like that, I, I, I just can't even imagine. Yeah, yeah. But if you're going to trust someone, it's him, right? Oh. <sighs> 
Okay. All right. Let's do it. We got this. Huh? You first. Baby steps. Hey, when we get there and we grab said donkey, maybe I really should leave like a Benjamin. No. A 20 spot? No. A thank you card. Stop it. All right, I'll trust him. John the Baptist said, a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Prepare the way of the Lord. How are we supposed to prepare the way of the Lord? Are we supposed to follow Jesus, not precede him? Given the choice, I would much rather have Jesus stepping out in front of me, leading the safari, not sending me ahead to prepare the way to hack away the vegetation with my little machete. I'm partial to the God of Psalm 123. The Lord leads me beside still waters. Yes, Jesus leads me sounds so much better. Or perhaps you prefer that old footprints poem in which Jesus carries us during the hard times. Now that works splendidly for me as well. But whenever I hear prepare the way of the Lord, I remember that sometimes Jesus does not just lead us or carry us, but sometimes Jesus sends us ahead, calling us to journey into places and to do unexpected things. Today's story is just that kind of story. It's easy to miss what with the donkey and the cloak and the colt and the hoopla and the palm branches and the shouts of Hosanna and the turmoil in the streets of Jerusalem. This is Jesus' parade. He is the center of it the recipient of all the attention. But the story begins, the, the start of the whole day begins with Jesus sending his disciples to a nearby village to retrieve a donkey and a colt, but not the village they've already been to, not the village to where Jesus had just visited and where there is a memory of him fresh in their mind. No, Jesus says, go to the village ahead of you. Go to that place. That place you haven't been. Go to that place I haven't taken you to yet. Go to that place. That's all up the road. There will be a donkey and a colt there. And if anyone says anything, just tell them the Lord needs it. Now we know that the disciples did what they were told. They let Jesus send them on ahead with these cryptic instructions. But I have to wonder if they protested a little bit, just like our drama suggested. They didn't know what they would encounter there. Would there be dangers on the road? They were very close to Jerusalem, Hostilities are starting to build, and it wouldn't be long before they would boil over. It's not hard to imagine them putting up a bit of resistance to Jesus' request to go ahead. Do we really have to go to that village up ahead? Why don't we go back to that village we just left? They know us there. I think I saw a donkey and colt at old Eli's house. We don't know what we'll find in the village ahead. It's unknown territory. Maybe they will be hostile towards us. You know, Jesus, why don't you go ahead and we'll tag along behind. You will make a much more convincing argument than us anyway. Friends, you see, it takes faith to follow Jesus. 
and we are called to do that. But it takes courage, a deep, courageous faith to go ahead of Jesus into the unknown. It takes a sturdy faith to walk down a road your feet have never walked before. It takes bold faith to look back over your shoulder and see Jesus smiling and saying, Yep, you go. I'll be right there when you get back. The crowds making their way to Jerusalem were an interesting lot. Some of them follow Jesus, shouting their hosannas. But it's not the crowd in Jesus' rear-view mirror, following at a comfortable distance, that gives this particular Sunday its name, Palm Sunday. It was the crowd that went out ahead of him, the crowd that cut palm branches, and put them on the road that, spe that spread their cloaks out on the path. It was that crowd that prepared the way for Jesus. The crowd ahead of him. They just couldn't help themselves. They couldn't help bursting into Jerusalem, that busy, bustling city, and sending the city into a messy uproar. He's coming, he's coming. Jesus, the prophet, has arrived. Blessed is the one who comes. Are there places, friends, in our lives in which we're respectfully following Jesus? I hope so. Thank God for that kind of following. But... But could it be that maybe, just maybe, Jesus has stopped leading for a moment and is just standing with you where you are, and maybe he's just pointing, just pointing to what village, to that village up the road, the village where something risky resides. Who knows what you'll find there? Who knows what we will find there? Of this, I'm sure. Whatever we find, we will find new life. New life. Redeemed and changed life. Perhaps if we go ahead, we will find what we found years ago, as McClure Church did when we let go of building our traditional church and instead decided to build a ministry which was about enriched, supportive, and affordable housing for older adults. Perhaps if we go out ahead, we will look at new ways to worship like Carlisle and Radville have, and thus open themselves up to continue to be the church in their communities. I think we're challenged this Palm Sunday to consider where Jesus is sending us as churches. We are challenged this Palm Sunday to consider where Jesus is sending us as individuals as well. We are challenged to go ahead into unknown space, putting cloaks on the road and making a place for the one who said, that which you do for the least of these, you do for me. It takes faith to follow Jesus, but it takes Palm Sunday faith to go ahead into the unfamiliar. It takes Palm Sunday faith to go ahead of Jesus, knowing that the road leads us through the events of Holy Week. For we know that going into the unknown doesn't always mean fun and adventure. Faith is risky. And nowhere do we feel that more acutely than the events of Holy Week. But let's not shy away from faith. For there's nowhere that Jesus sends us that he is not willing to go himself. So let's be bold. For we are sent ahead to make the way for Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. and sing together.
restlessness and throw me here in joy we keep the feast we that once were lost and scattered in communion's love have stood taste and see the grace eternal taste and see that god is good all who hunger sing together jesus christ is living bread come from loneliness and longing here in peace we have been fed blessed are those who from this table live their lives in gratitude taste and see the grace eternal taste and see that god is good our prayer of dedication god on that first Palm Sunday, the disciples went into the village to find what Jesus asked for with only these words, the Lord needs them. Holy One, we respond today and always with our gifts, our time, and our very selves because the Lord still needs them. Bless what we offer. Amen. to our God wave high the palm praise to Christ Jesus God's own son praise to the spirit we now sing for in our hearts Hosanna's ring We have already sung our way to this table, and now we prepare to receive its nourishment, this God's gift to all. And as I mentioned earlier, we will come to the front to receive. When you get to the front, you put your hands like this so that the server can put a piece of bread, which is gluten-free, into your hands, and then if you would eat it, and then receive a grape, um, and then eat that. So let us be prepared now to be strengthened at God's table. There will be some words on occasion that pop up on the screen for us all to share. So may God be with you. Let us open our hearts to God. Let us give thanks to God. God who knows us, we are amazed by you. Your love never runs out. Your hope never runs dry. Your joy never gives up, gives up. We wish that we could be more like you in that way. In a world that loves scarcity, your abundance is shocking. In a world that knows fear, your joy is compelling. In a world that knows anxiety, your peace is captivating. We long for these things. Therefore, with all that is, seen and unseen, and with all our ancestors in faith, we join our voices in the song of thanksgiving. Holy, holy, holy God, power of life and love, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna through the ages. Blessed is the one who comes to bring your justice to earth. So today we ask you, God, be with us on the hamster wheel. Be with us when compassion fatigue rears her head. Be with us when stress makes it hard to breathe. Be with us when self-doubt pushes in close. Be with us when exhaustion becomes constant or when loneliness becomes our primary language. Be with us and show us the way to life that you long for us. 
Show us a life of expansive faith. Show us a life of overflowing joy. Show us a life of absorbing beauty. Show us a life of engrossing purpose. Show us a life that is as honest and rich and meaningful as the one Jesus led. And until that expansive and holy day, we will continue to gather at this table. Until that day, we will continue to look for you in our midst. We remember that when J Jesus ate with his friends, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, saying, Drink this cup that is poured out for you. It is the promise of God made in my blood. Whenever you drink it, remember me. At this time, we also remember all with whom you would have us share your feast. God, we pray for all who are in sorrow or in pain. All who are ill or alone. All who live with fear, oppression, or hunger. For all whom the world counts as least and last. We pray for the church for nations as they strive for peace and justice. We pray for all families and friends. Loving God, we rejoice in the gift of your grace, remembering Christ's life and death, proclaiming his resurrection, waiting in hope for his coming again. Grant that in praise and thanksgiving we may so offer ourselves to you that our lives may proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Send, O oh God, your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who share in this loaf and cup may be the body of Christ, light, life, and love in the world. In this hope and as your people, we praise you through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. And together now we offer the prayer that Jesus taught us to say together, saying, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus has always been one to invite. He said, drop your nets and follow. He said, let the little children come to me. He said, stand up from your mat, you are healed. Jesus has always been one to invite, and that's not changed. So friends, you are invited to this table, each and every one, with our doubts, our fears, our scars, our joy, our dreams, our hopes, our questions. We are invited to God's table. And here we will be met here we will be fed. Here we will be given a taste of an expansive life that is full to the brim with love, overflowing with joy. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. The cup of blessing. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Can I invite the servers to come forward, please?
everyone receive who wished to receive? Sometimes it's hard to see if someone wasn't able to come forward. Let us pray. And you'll see that your words are highlighted. For the bread we have eaten, for the wine, the wine we have tasted, for the life we have received. Amen. Grant that what we have done and have been given here may so put its mark on us that it may remain always in our hearts. Grant that we may grow in Christian love and understanding and that ours may be lives of faithful action. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Together let's stand and sing. Folded 
friends, we have encountered the timeless story of Palm Sunday. Inspired, encouraged, transformed by this faith story, let us go and be the faith-filled people that you are called to be. Be generous with your kindness, be radical in loving, be tender in your compassion. And may God of the journey go with you into this holy week. May Christ, and may God of the journey go with you into this holy week. And may the Christ of vulnerability show you the way you must go. And may the delightful Holy Spirit always be your companion. Amen. shall go out with hope of resurrection we shall go out from strength to strength go on we shall go out and tell our stories boldly tales of a love that will not let us go.